In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the basics of a Credible. So you've just finished setting up your account, I'm going to walk you through all the processes to issuing your first credentials. Now there are settings that you can adapt and change to make a Credible work in exactly the way that you want for your business, but in this video I'm going to be focusing on the fundamentals. So here's how to issue your first batch of credentials with a Credible. After opening an account, the first thing that you'll want to do is to create a design. Now for the purpose of this video I'm going to stick to certificates, but the process for creating badges is very similar. Let's go to create a certificate design and this will automatically open the certificate designer. The templates tab opens automatically as well, but if you have a certificate background full of your own branding ready to go that you'd like to use instead of one of our templates, head to document, upload new image, select the design, and here it is, ready to go, ready to populate with text and attributes for your certificate design. Today I'm going to stick to templates, so I'm going to undo this and head back to the templates tab. All of our templates are arranged by size and orientation, so you can choose the one that's most appropriate for you. I'm going to use US Letter Landscape. We have loads of templates that you can choose from, ready to go, ready to use. I'm going to choose this one here. The first thing I'd like to do is to change the font that appears in this text box. So I'm going to head to the text tab and use this toolbar to make any adjustments to any text that appears on the certificate. I can also resize and move any of the text boxes around. There's also a generic signature on this design which I'd like to replace. I'm going to head to the Images tab, upload new image, select the signature I want to use. I can then drag, drop and adjust this to wherever I'd like it to appear on the design. On all of our templates, you'll notice these phrases inside square brackets. These are called attributes and they are essential for creating and publishing credentials in large volumes. They essentially act in the same way as a mail merge, so you don't have to come onto the certificate design and change the information individually each time. Leave this as it is and the information will automatically populate onto the certificate when you create it. The attributes that appear on this design are recipient name, the group course name, the issue date, and the credential ID. If you'd like to add any more attributes, you can go to the attributes tab and select any of the pre-made attributes here. If you've uploaded your own certificate design, you'll need to drop these attributes in before you save and close. The next thing I want to do is to add a QR code to my design. QR codes are brilliant because it means that even if your recipient prints off a hard copy of their certificate, any stakeholder will be able to scan the QR code and verify the credential. This is a generic QR code image, but when the credential is created, this will be replaced with a unique QR code. I'm now happy with how all the information appears on my certificate design, so I'm going to name it and then click save and close. The design now appears in the design overview ready for us to use. The next thing I want to do is to create a group. So I'm going to head to groups at the top of the dashboard. A quick note on groups. A group is a holder for all of the information regarding a specific achievement that you are awarding. So whether it's an accreditation, a license, an event your recipients attended, or any kind of achievement, you're going to want to create an individual group for every individual achievement. Click on Create Group. Now there are lots of different group settings that you can use and adjust, but for today I'm going to focus on the five key pieces of information required in order to publish our first batch of credentials. 
A display name is what will actually appear on your certificate. Then here you have the identifier. Now the identifier doesn't appear on the certificate. This is the unique name that you will give your group so that you can easily find it on the Accredible dashboard. So even if you have lots of different groups that all do very similar things and have very similar display names, so long as you give them unique identifiers, you will be able to find that group easily. The next thing that we'll want to do is to add that lovely certificate design that we've just made. Which is as simple as that. Then you need to give a description of the credential that your students have achieved. The last thing that you'll need to do is to add a URL to your website. Now this will automatically populate with the URL that you gave us when you signed up. However, you can adjust this so that it points to a specific landing page for this achievement on your website. So now that all this information has been filled in, I can now click save. If we head back to the groups overview, I can now see that this group is ready to issue credentials from. So let's do that now. We can either click on create credentials within the group or we can head to the credentials overview. As we currently don't have any credentials created or published, the credentials overview is empty. So let's go ahead and create some credentials now. You can either click create credentials here but usually you would click this button up here. It will then give you a list of all of the groups that you can publish from. As we only have the one group, we only have the one option, so let's click this. Here we have two methods that you can use in order to upload information to create credentials. The first one is by spreadsheet, the second one is manually. The difference between these are dependent on the volume of credentials that you are looking to create. If you have a large number of credentials that you need to create, we recommend the spreadsheet method. If you are only creating a handful somewhere within the region of one to five credentials, we recommend the manual method. To upload credentials manually, go to create credentials via form. Here you will be able to upload the recipient's name their email address and you can either keep the issue date or change it. If you have more attributes on your certificate than just these three, go to show all attributes and you can upload more information. Because I'm going to be creating quite a few credentials, I'm going to use the spreadsheet method. If you need a template spreadsheet to enter your data in before uploading, click on download spreadsheet template here. I have my spreadsheet ready to go, so I'm going to click the Upload Spreadsheet button, select my data, and open. The system is now analysing my data to see which bits of information it can auto-assign an attribute to. What it can't auto-assign, it'll ask you to assign for it. The system has successfully identified the recipient names and the email address, However, my spreadsheet had a column of data that doesn't need to appear on my certificate, so I will go ahead and skip this column. If the system incorrectly assigns a column of data, you can always use the reassign button to find the correct attribute that it needs to be assigned to. Now that all of our columns have either been assigned or skipped, we can click next. You'll then be brought to this page where any discrepancies or duplicates that the system has found, it will warn you about. Because this is our first batch of credentials, there are no warnings, so we could go ahead and create our credentials. So let's click this button here. You can publish the credentials straight away. However, it is good practice to review your credentials before publishing, so let's do that. Click on continue. The system is now creating your credentials by taking the information you've just uploaded and populating the attributes on your certificate design, using the information from your group as well. We can now click on review newly created credentials. And here they are, the new batch of digital credentials. They're not published yet, which you can tell by the grey icon here. Because they're not published, 
they're not live online and they haven't yet been sent to your recipients. Let's review one of these credentials before we publish them. Click on the credential ID and you can see here that the name has been successfully dropped in as well as the display name, the issue date and a unique certificate ID has been created. The unique QR code has also been generated at this point. If there are any mistakes in the data that you've uploaded for these credentials, you can come to the credential information and edit it here. Everything looks good, so I'm ready to publish these. You can select individual credentials, or you can select all of them, and then hit publish. You'll see a message notifying you that the credentials have now been published and you will see that these icons here have turned green. Your recipient will receive an email that looks like this. This has been created using the default Accredible email template. However, you can create email templates that better fit your branding. At the top, there is information regarding the award. They can either click on this icon, this button, or copy and paste this URL in order to reach their credential. There's also some more information at the bottom of the email on how your recipient can use their credential. Let's go ahead and click this. And here it is, your first published digital credential. This is what's called the credential view, and we have more information on how your recipients can use this to interact with their digital certificate in another video, the link to which will be in the description of this video. For more in-depth information on how you can use Accredible, head to help.accredible.com or if you have any questions, contact us at customer support.